Right, good day grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. Okay, so on Friday I finished going through the circle geometry that I wanted to go through with you and I promised you that I would give you a live assessment. What that is, is an assessment that's on the actual interweb. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you where to find it. If you're on the to enable platform, if you're on the pl to enable platform, your dashboard will look something like this, except that you will have, you won't necessarily have all of this administration, but you will definitely have um, a whole bunch of subjects here, and then your classrooms, like mathematics, grade 10, grade 11, etc, etc, okay? Now, if you look on the left-hand side here, yeah, you will see there is a dashboard, upcoming events, and if you click on that, you will see that there are a whole bunch of lessons that have been put on for today and they will be tomorrow etc etc okay but if you go look at live assessments you will see that it says here the live lesson grade 12 geometry okay now you have to be registered as a grade 12 and you have to be registered in the mathematics class so grade 12 mathematics you have to be subject registered in the the, the grade and in the subject to be able to see this, okay? And then what can happen is that you'll click on this and it'll take you into the questionnaire and it'll say you've got 60 minutes to complete this and it says negative marking, incorrect answers result in marks being denied. The data do not guess as you will lose marks. Okay, more importantly, I don't want you guys to guess because it's going to give me a bad idea of what you guys know and don't know. So the idea is to answer what you know, okay? Um, and then you start it. Okay, so when you start it, you will see there's this nice circle here, yeah, circle question, it gives you information. And then there are multiple choice questions like grade 12. These are not multiple guess, they are multiple choice. So you are going to answer these. Um, ideally, either I would say, yeah, if you're doing this on your on your iPads or on your cell phones, it might be a bit small, but you can download the app. Um, I will demonstrate to you how to do it on the app. Unfortunately, for some reason, my laptop wouldn't let me download the app. Okay, so I couldn't do it. Download the app. I will show you that tomorrow and go through these questions. And I'm going to leave this open for today and for tomorrow. Because I know that some of you actually do watch this lesson the next day because you're not available today. So I'm going to leave this open. And then what I'm going to do is, um, let's see today. Yeah, I will I will close this. It's going to be up and live for you guys today, Monday, and tomorrow, Tuesday. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday morning or Tuesday night, I will make it unlive. I will close it up and I will see how you guys did. And then depending on how well you did and which sections you seem to struggle with, I will go through it with you. So you can see it's not a many questions and I've given you 60 whole minutes to do this. Basically because sometimes I know that students find it difficult to see things. Okay, so that is why we're doing that. Okay, so that is the live assessment that you should find. Um, you can find it on your app and like I said, if you're struggling to find it on in the internet, if you're not on the platform, then tomorrow I will make sure that I've got the app on my laptop. I did try and install it about two or three times today. I don't know why it didn't work. Um, and I will show you how to do it through the app as well. Right, so the only thing about doing it through the app, by registering through the app, is you can't message me. Whereas if you register through the platform, then you can message me, which does make a difference if you don't know what's going on and you really need help. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to my lesson for the day. And I don't know why I did that. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to go through trigonometry because traditionally I find that my students struggle with in paper two, they struggle mainly with geometry and trigonometry. Okay, <laughs> those are the two big sections that they really struggle with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through that. So we're going to start with compound angle identities because I find that um, this is one of the main sections, especially because it's new for grade 12 that my students really struggle with. Now the compound angle identities are actually given to you. They're given 
to you that so you don't actually have to learn them it makes life a little bit easier that cos a minus b is equal to cos a cos b plus sine a sine b cos of a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b sine of a plus b is sine cos cos sine and you keep the sine and sine a minus b is sine cos cos sine and you keep the sine Okay, um, and the reason I say it like that is because back in the dark ages when I was at school, we didn't have formula sheets. So we actually had to memorize this. Sorry, I'm looking for my formula sheet. So we actually had to memorize this. So I always remember this cos was cos cos sine sine change sine, whereas sine was sine cos cos sine and keep the sine. Anyway, not important. You guys get given the formula. So that's quite nice for you. So let's get started. So you're given that, that what you need to do with these, unfortunately, is you need to know some of the proofs and they are examinable. They really mean about this, okay? They are very examinable. They're in the first paper, the geometric series and the arithmetic series proofs are examinable. And in the second paper, these are, exam are the proofs that are examinable, okay? So you have to know your proofs. So let's go through it. So you need to derive the formula for cos of a plus b. So you know that cos a minus b is cos cos sine sine change the sine. So what you need to say is, okay, we've got cos of a plus b. But what if we rewrote this as cos of a minus minus b? Because the minus times the minus is the plus. So we're cheating and we're just rewriting it. Right, if we do that, then we can apply this rule. It becomes cos a cos of minus b plus sine a sine of minus b. Okay, and now if you don't know it, you can actually now apply your cos diagram, which says all stations to Cape Town. So cos of negative b means that it's going to be going back this way. It's an acute angle, so you're going to be in this quadrant, which means that that is positive and you end up with cos a cos b, but sine of negative b, do you see that if you're in negative b would be like an angle of size b in the angle size b in the negative quadrant, okay? Because you're going negatively. So the only thing that's positive in this fourth quadrant is cos. So therefore this is going to be the same as saying minus sine b. That's what that is saying. Sine of negative b is the same as saying minus sine b. But then you've got, that means that this thing here can be written as sine a times a minus sine b. And what is a minus times a plus? Well, it's a minus. So that is how you derive your cos a plus b. Okay. Right. Now, you must always remember that what you're doing here is you're going cos of minus b is equal to cos b because of the fact that you are looking at your cast diagram. So you don't actually have to remember it. You can just apply your cast diagram. Great tools. I'm very much against remembering things for the simple reason that we are fallible. We are humans and we are fallible. And when we get into the exam situation, there can be a point where we actually just don't remember things, which is terrible. So if you understand it, then you have a better chance of being able to work it out. Okay, so that is why I'd rather that you understand the cos of negative b means that you've got minus b, so therefore it's b in the fourth quadrant, and if you're looking at the cos diagram, cos is positive in this fourth quadrant, therefore cos of negative b is cos b. Okay, now we now have to prove the next one. Again, we're given the cos of a minus b is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. And they want us to derive an equation for sine of a minus b. And the tip here, the tip is to remember co-ratios, co-ratios. The whole thing is that we can take sine a minus b and say it's the same as cos of 90 minus a minus b. Okay, 90 minus a minus b. Because sine and cos are co-ratios of each other. So then we can rewrite this as cos of 90 minus a plus b, which again can be rewritten as cos of 90 minus a and then minus b. 
Why do we want to do that? Because nine, because of 90 minus a, we can do something with. We can't do anything with a minus b, but now we've got two equations, two angles that we can actually do stuff with. So now we're going to apply this rule. So it becomes cos of 90 minus a, cos of minus b plus sine 90 minus a sine b, right? Okay, so now what do we want? We want to do um, cos of 90 minus a becomes what? Becomes sine a because that's a co-ratio. Cos of minus b, we've just proven to use cos b because it's in the fourth quadrant. Sine of 90 minus a is cos of a and sine of minus b is sine b. So therefore we've proved that sine of a minus b is sine a cos a minus is sine a sine of a minus b is equal to sine a sine b I mean cos sorry I'm doing this wrong sine a cos b minus cos a sine b um Okay, so what do you need to remember? Again, you need to remember that cos of minus b is cos b and sine of minus b is minus sine b again, okay? And then you remember have to remember your co-ratios that cos of 90 minus a is sine b and cos a sine of 90 minus a is cos a. Right, happy with that? Right, let's carry on. So now again, we're going to do the third proof, which says we're going to need to derive sine of a plus b. So you can take a wild guess what you're going to do now. You're again going to take your sine of a plus b and use your co-ratio. So we're going to do cos of 90 minus a plus b. So do you not agree that what's the chances are that we're going to take this, make this 90 minus a and then minus b and then go for it. So let's do that. It becomes cos of 90 minus a minus b. So now we can multiply it out. So it's going to become cos of 90 minus a cos b plus sine of 90 minus a sine b. Because remember if it's cos, it's cos, cos, sine, sine, change the sign. Okay, so then it becomes cos of 90 minus a sine a. Cos of b is just cos b. Sine of 90 minus a is cos a. And sine of b is sine b. And then we're done. Okay, so sine a plus b becomes sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Okay, so again, we're just going through. Now we're going to practice what we've learned. So it says calculate, calculate without the use of a calculator. And grade 12, I have to say this to you very seriously. Even if they say without the use of a calculator, I have got so many students that will say, oh, they'll never know that we're not using a calculator. They'll know. They'll know, no, no. OK, so you need to think about this and you need to realize that actually you have to work this out without the use of a calculator because they've got tricks. And let me show you what the trick is. Do you agree that this could be written as sine of 60 plus 45? sine of 60 plus 45 and immediately you see that that is a 60 and a 45 okay so those are special angles so if you started just putting this in your calculator you're going to end up with a number and you won't show any working and you won't have shown that you know the special angle triangles and therefore you'll lose all those marks okay so we know that sine of a plus b, it's on the formula sheet, is going to be sine a cos b plus cos a sine b. Right, so it's going to be sine 60 cos 45 plus cos 60 sine 45. And now you need to grade 12 learn your special triangles because they do not give them to you in the exams. You have to learn them. So this one is your 60, 30. This would be 60. This would be 30. Okay. And that's going to be 2, 1 and root 
3 and then this is going to be 45 and this is going to be 1 1 root 2. I'm just going to show you how you get this one because it's, I've show, once I got shown it, it was actually very easy when someone had shown me how they get it. So let's say you've got an equilateral triangle. All three sides are equal, okay? And this angle is 60, that angle is 60, and this angle is 60, right? And let's say we let every one of these sides be two units long. Now, let us assume that we drop a line perpendicular from here. Okay, what's happened? I've now split this bottom side into two. So this is one. That's now 90 degrees because it's a perpendicular bisector. And this is two. And this angle here is 30 degrees. So therefore, we've got a two, one, and then by Pythagoras, that is root three. And once you know that this actually comes from an equilateral triangle, it actually becomes very easy to remember where the two and the one and the root three fit in. Okay, so now let's pop these numbers in. I'm just going to keep the same color. So sine of 60. Remember, we need Sarkatoa. So we're going of sine of 60, right? So sine is opposite of our hypotenuse. So it's opposite of our hypotenuse. So that's going to be root 3 over 2. Cos of 45 is adjacent of our hypotenuse. I'm just going to use this one, which is 1 over root 2. 1 over root 2. Cos of 60 is adjacent of our hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. And sine 45 is amazingly 1 over root 2. So we've got a common denominator here. Well, 2 times root 2 is 2 root 2. And root 3 times 1 is root 3. Plus, this is 2 root 2, and this is 1. So it becomes root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2 and we that's it we don't do anything else because they've said calculate without the use of a calculator now if they'd said um, no thirds in the denominator they might say that or they might say rationalize rationalize the denominator what they mean is they want to get rid of the root 2 so what do we have to do? We have to multiply both the top and the bottom by root 2. So if we do that, remember we multiply this with everything on this side. So it becomes root 2 multiplied by root 3 plus 1 root 2 all over 2. Root 2 times root 2 is just 2. So that becomes root 6 plus root 2 all over 4. Okay, so that's how you would rationalize the denominator. You just basically multiply both the top and the bottom by whatever is in by root. Okay, let's try another example. Right, we want cos 15. Now again, they're asking us to calculate without the use of calculators. So immediately I'm starting to think spatial triangles again. So I'm going to draw out my spatial triangles. Obviously, you guys don't have to draw them out every time because I'm assuming you'll draw it once. And I would like to give you a hint. I would like to suggest that the minute you get into the exams and they allow you to write down, because okay, the first 10 minutes you're not supposed to write, the minute they allow you to write, I would draw my special triangles so that I don't have to try and, no, that's wrong, that, is it wrong? One squared plus one squared, oh, that's right. Um, and that's 45, okay. I won't, I don't want to have to try and remember this throughout my exams. I mean, I might have got a really horrible question just before I get to my trigonometry and then I'm struggling with it and for some reason it just freaks me out. And then suddenly I get to the trigonometry, which I actually usually find easy, but suddenly because I'm in a flap, I can't do this question. And then I haven't written down my triangles and I get them wrong. Okay, if you write down your triangles right at the beginning, at least you know they're fresh in your head, you've got the triangles, that when you get to your trick section, they're easy peasy and they're ready for you to do. Okay, so let's go through this. Cos of 45. So cos of 45 can be written as cos, now you get to choose. You can either write it as 45 minus 30 or you could go for cos of 60 minus 45. It doesn't matter, okay? The point is that the difference is 15. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. Okay, so let's do this. 
cos of 45. So your cos rules are cos of a minus b is cos cos sine sine change of sine. So it's cos a cos b, okay, plus sine a sine b. Right, remember you get given this in the formula sheet. So let's do this. It becomes cos 45 cos 30 plus sine 45 sine 30. So now all we have to do is substitute in. So again, we're going to write out Sagatoa. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's 1 over root 2. Okay. Cos of 30 is adjacent to our partners, so it's root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. Sine of 30 is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 1 over 2. So again, we've got root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2. 2, which equals root 3 plus 1 over 2 root 2. Okay, let's move on. Right, now we're looking at tan 15, and tan 15 is a bit tricky because of the fact that tan is made up of sine over cos. You guys haven't learned of, and you won't learn of doing the compound angle for tan. It's no longer in the curriculum. So we have to use our knowledge of how to work out sine 15 and cos 15 to get to tan 15. Okay, so again, I'm going to draw out my special triangles. Okay, so this here is 60, 30, 2, 1, root 3. Three, and I would urge you also to write, draw this out every time you're doing your questions when you are practicing. Obviously, when you're writing your exam, you don't have to, but simply because every time you write it out, you're reinforcing it in your head. Okay, so now since we did 45 minus 30 in the last question, why don't we do 60 minus 45 in this question? So we're going to go, this is the same as sine of 60 minus 45 all over cos of 60 minus 45. Okay, so sine of a minus b is the same as saying sine 60 cos 45. Oh, sorry, let me just write that neater. Cos 45. And then it becomes minus cos 60 sine 45 all over cos is going to be cos 60. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. Cos 45 plus sine 60, sine 45. Okay, so now all we have to do is fill in our numbers. So sine of 60 is, okay, so we need Sakatoa. Sakatoa. Or silly old hens cackle and howl till old age, whichever you prefer, as long as you know and get these right, okay? So sine of 60 is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's root 3 over 2. Cos of 45 is 1 over root 2, so it's 1 over root 2, minus cos of 60 is adjacent of our partners, it's 1 over 2, sine of 45 is 1 over root 2, all divided by cos of 60, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2, cos of 45, which is 1 over root 2, minus sine of 60, which is opposite of our partners, which is root 3 over 2, sine of 45, which is 1 over root 2. So do you agree now? We've got a common denominator at the top here of 2 root 2. Hmm. Okay, oh, sorry, let me just write that neater for you guys. Okay. 
So we've got 2 root 2, and then that becomes 3 minus 1, all divided by 2 root 2, and that becomes 1 minus root 3. Okay, so what can we do? We can, if we're dividing by a fraction, what can we do? We can tip and times. So 3 minus 1 is just 2, so it's 2 over 2 root 2, we'll worry about that now, times by 2 root 2 all over 1 minus root 3. This cancels with this, and you're left with 2 over 1 minus root 3. And that's the answer, especially if they say do not use a calculator. Because if we use a calculator, then you'll get decimals and funny numbers. So that is your final answer. Right, let's try another one. Okay, so now this is a little bit different. What we've done now is they've given us the expanded version and we need to bring it down into the simplest. Okay, so we've got cos, cos, sine, sine. So cos, cos, sine, sine is the cos rule. So therefore we know, where did my pen go? That's weird. Oh, I see. It's going to be cos... So it's cos sine sine sin is a cos, and it's going to be 20 and 40. Now, all we have to do is work out what happens here. Is it a plus or minus? And if you look on the formula sheet, you will see that this is a plus. So that is the same as saying cos of 60 degrees. And again, you may not use your calculator. You have to get out or at least show that you have done this. You got 2, 1, root 3. And this is 60, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that is a half. And there you go. Guys, if you decide to put this in your calculator and you'll end up with an answer of 0.5, if this question's out of 4, you'll get 1 out of 4 because you'll have not shown that you understand that this is a compound angle and it simplifies to this. You won't have drawn your picture, so you wouldn't have been able to show that the cos of 60 is a half. So you would have got 1 out of 4, which is 25%, um, which is obviously not great. So try and make sure that you're doing these without the use of a calculator. Right, now let's look at this one. We've got cos 65, cos 35. Then we've got cos 25, cos 55. So initially it looks like an interesting thing, but yeah, do you see that we've got 65 and 35 and 25 and 55? Hmm. Okay, but what happens if I realize that 65 and 25, 65 plus 25, equals 90 and 35 plus 55 is equal to 90 and if that's the case then I can change these I could say that this equals cos 65 cos 35 plus this could be written as cos of 90 minus 65 do you agree and this could be written as cos of, I don't know why I got that as a bracket, cos of 90 minus 35. But these that are co-ratios, and I could rewrite them as cos 65, cos 35, plus sine 35. Ugh, I'm being an idiot, sorry. Sine of 65. <laughs> sine of 65 and then sine of 35 okay and then dc we've got a cos cos sine sine which means that this is cos and it's 65 and 35 and all we have to do is work out what to do with this middle yeah is it a plus or minus and if you look in the formula sheet what happens is this change of sign, so it becomes a minus. So then we end up with cos of 30 degrees, and then we can use our special triangles, and this is 60, 30, this is a 2, 1, a root 3, and remember we've got Sarkatoa, cos of 30 is adjacent of our part news, so that is equal to root 3 all over 2. 
Okay, so do you see that I changed the second half? I changed it to cos of 90 minus 65 and cos of 90 minus 35. But do you realize I could have done it the other way? I could have changed the first half. So let me do that quickly and let me show you how it works. Should work out to exactly the same answer, so let's do that. Let's do this. Let's change this lot. Then we've got cos. This is 90 minus 25. And that's cos of 90 minus 35 plus plus cos of 25 cos of 55 which then becomes sine of 25 actually that doesn't help at all does it no, it does sorry um sine <laughs> of uh, 35 and then plus cos of 25, sorry, that's 50. <sighs> that's cos of 55, that's supposed to be 55. I'm doing this too fast. Okay, right, and then cos of 25, cos of 55, and that means that that's also a 55 there. So then do you agree we now have again cos, cos, sine, sine, and we change the sign, but remember that cos has to be in the front. So we can rewrite this as cos of 25, cos of 55, plus sine of 25, sine of 55, which then becomes cos of 55 minus 25, which then again is just going to be cos of 30, which is exactly the same as what we just had. And then you solve for it. Okay, and it's going to be 1, 2, root 3. So cos of 30 is going to be adjacent of our partners, which is root 3 over 2. Two. There you go. So it doesn't matter which way you go, you're going to get to the same answer. Right. Now, it says prove that sine of 75 is this horrible thing, and they say without the use of a calculator. So as soon as I see root 2s and root 3s, I immediately am thinking special triangles. Okay. And this is 60. That is 30. That is 2, 1, root 3. I know you're bored with this already because you guys are saying, I know how the, these triangles off the palm, back of my hand. I know it better than the back of my hand. That's fine. That's awesome. That's the way it should be. Okay, right. So now, sine of 75. How do we get 75? Well, we could go 60 plus 15, but that doesn't really help us because 15 is a special triangle. But we could also go 45 plus 30. And that works because we've got a 45 and a 30. So we can go sine of 75 equals the same as sine of 45 plus 30, right? So do you agree that becomes sine 45 cos 30 plus cos 45 sine 30? Okay, so it's sine, cos, cos, sine, keep the sine, yeah. So sine of 45, and again, we need to know our Sakatoa. Sakatoa. Sine of 45 is opposite of a partner, so it's 1 over root 2. Cos of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 3 over 2. Okay, cos of 45 is adjacent of our partner, so it's 1 over root 2. Sine of 30 is opposite of our partner, which is 1 over 2. So do you agree that is the same as saying root 3 over 2 root 2 plus 1 over 2 root 2, which could have a full common denominator of 2 root 2, and that's root 3 plus 1. So now, at this point, I would start looking to see if anything's similar. And I can go, yay, I've got this bracket here. But this denominator doesn't look like this. Do you see that this is a 4 and this is 2 root 2? But if I multiply, if I rationalize the denominator, if I multiply both the top and the bottom by root 2, what happens? Well, root 2 is just multiplied by the whole of the top, so I end up with root 2 times by root 3 plus 1, 
yay all over two times root two times root two root two times root two is two so it becomes root two bracket root three plus one all over four yay i've just proven it and grade 12 seriously i would strongly urge you to check your um you're working as you go along and see if you're heading in the right direction okay so like i said when you get to this point say well i've got this am i going the right way what could i possibly do because obviously when they say prove it they're giving you a hint that this is where we're aiming for so you have to do something to get there right now it says express tan alpha plus beta in terms of sines and cosines okay so let's do this tan of alpha plus beta is the sine of alpha plus beta all over cos of alpha plus beta right so sine of alpha plus beta is written as sine alpha cos beta minus no plus sorry plus cos alpha sine beta all over cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta and that's it horrible thing but that's it that's nothing more you can do with that right now they've asked us to simplify sine of p cos of 45 minus p plus cos p sine of 45 minus p cos p cos of 60 minus p minus sine p sine of 60 minus p hmm so immediately your thoughts might be along the lines of oh this is a horrible sign because we first have to fix this and this and this and this before we can go along with messing up that but that's actually not true because let us let 45 minus p minus p equal a and let us let 60 minus p equal b if we do that look what happens you've got sine p cos a plus cos p sine a all over cos p cos b minus sine p sine b okay and then you can see already that these are already compound angles that have been um, extenuated have been sorry I've been stretched out they've already been worked out okay so what we need to do is we need to take them back down so do you agree this is sine cos cos sine so that is the sine rule so that becomes sine and that is p plus a all over this is cos cos sine sine so that's obviously the cos rule and then we change the sign so this becomes p minus b and now all we have to do is substitute in these values into this so this becomes sine of p minus plus bracket 45 minus p all over cos of p minus 60 minus p right because 45 minus p is a because we let it be that and 60 minus p is b okay so all i'm doing is substituting in so then what happens this becomes sine i'm going to do it slowly so you can make sure you understand this becomes p plus 45 minus p all over cos of p minus 60 and a minus times a minus is a plus p so that becomes sine 45 all over cos of negative 60 hmm 
Okay, and then that looks pretty easy because we've got special triangles that help us with this. This is 45, that's 2, 1, and 1, and this here is 60, and this is 2, oh, that's root 2, 2, 1, root 3. Okay, so then I'm just going to take this up here because I'm running out of space. So sine of 45, remember we're doing Sokotoa, Sokotoa, sine is opposite of hypotenuse, so it's 1 over root 2, so it's 1 over root 2 divided by, now I'm dividing by cos of negative 60, and now this question is tricky because you need to remember that using your cos diagram, all stations to Cape Town, negative 60 means it's in the fourth quadrant which means it's positive. So that's divided by the positive value. So this thing here, this here, is the same as cos of 60. And cos of 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 1 over 2. So what do you do when you divide? You tip and time. So it's a half, 1 over root 2, times by 2 over 1, which is 2 over root 2. Ta-da! Okay, so that is quite tricky, um, and if you had multiplied this out, if you'd gone cos of 45 minus p is, if you'd gone over here, and you'd gone cos of 45 minus p is cos um, 45 cos negative p um, plus sine 45 sine of p negative p, and then carried on, it's fine. You would have eventually got out to this answer. It would have taken you an enormous amount of time, but you would have eventually got out to this answer. But if you can see the trick, if you can realize that that there is already a compound angle and that there is already a compound angle and then break it down, then it makes life a lot easier. Okay, great 12s. I'm going to call that a day for today on the compound angles. Um, we will carry on with compound angles and double angles tomorrow and then move on to other forms, I mean, other things within trig. Please go do the live assessment. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys do with the ge circle geometry questions. And then obviously once you've done them, um, we can go back to it and see if there's certain sections that you need to, we need to revisit to make sure you understand. Have a great day.